Hey, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Row. Today, we're doing a five-way blind for Jamie to continue to find out what is her favorite age of bourbon. So we've got a five-way blind for Jamie. These are essentially the odd ones out. These were ones that didn't fit into the other competitions for one reason or another, or we had too many of the bottles in one competition or another. Uh, so we have a combination of ages here, and then the winner from this uh, is gonna advance into another uh, bracket or another round at least. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna try to figure out what is Jamie's favorite age of bourbon. Now, up first is Baker's 7. This is eight years, eight months, 107 proof. Uh, these things are pretty tasty from Jim Beam. Uh, every single one, they are single barrels, so every single one might be slightly different age. And uh, and slightly, the, the proof is always 107 proof though, uh, but there, they can be pretty good. This is one that, uh, for me, has always tasted very good, but not necessarily done good in blinds. And we'll see how it does tonight. Next up is a classic. This is Weller 12 year coming in at 90 proof. This is a legend. This is fantastic. This is, I think, hands down the one I think is going to win tonight, but we'll see. And, uh, well, we'll see because, you know, this isn't as always as easy as we think it's going to be. All right, next up is E.H. Taylor Small Batch from Buffalo Trace. Now, this one is coming in uh, right around seven, eight years is what uh, Buffalo Trace reports that it is. They don't actually give you an age statement, but it's about seven years old. So uh, it might be the youngest on the table tonight. But nevertheless, I love E.H. Taylor Small Batch. So coming in at 100 proof, uh, right at the perfect proof spot, and uh, I think it's gonna actually do well in this competition, but we'll see, because there are some heavy hitters in this one. Next up is an Old Fitz eight year. Now these things are incredibly hard to find. Uh, this is probably the hardest one to find on the table. Eight year, age stated, and uh, coming out of Heaven Hill. Uh, this comes in bottle and bond, 100 proof, be beautiful, gorgeous bottle, and very, very tasty. And last up tonight is 1792 12 year coming in at 96.6 proof. Now, this one is one that I think is a little overrated. I just think it is. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe it'll come in first tonight. And uh, But let me get these poured up. We'll get Jamie in here and we'll get started. Ooh, I get butter on the nose, like a, like a sugary butter. I'm getting some baking spice, some caramel. It smells good. Glad you did good. I did. I always do good. <laughs> I'm getting a faint weediness on this one. I'm getting some red berry. Very faint. It's not like a strong candy type of red berry. It's more of like a dark. Almost like a little bit of a dark cherry. Brown sugars, caramel. A little bit of proof. A little bit of spice. It's nice. Oh! Spicy on the palate. My tongue is tingling. Ooh. It's harder to pick up all that uh, sweetness that I originally found with this one because it's so spicy. I'm definitely getting some spicy tones. Oh, it ends with butterscotch. Yeah, okay. Ooh. I'm getting a little bit of a peanut, a little bit of barrel quality, actually a lot of barrel quality, mm -hmm. some spiciness, very kind of oaky taste to it. A little bit of chocolate, caramel, does have kind of a butterscotch toward the end. Mm -hmm. Can't disagree with you much on that. Uh, it's got a decent mouthfeel. Yeah. Finish isn't particularly long, but it's not bad. It's not long, but it is impactful because I, that's where I get what I like about a bourbon when it's sweet. Yeah. Because now I'm left with a very nice sweetness. Yeah, it does finish on a sweet note. So uh, for that, from that perspective, I think it's one that you like. Ooh. I get a very light red berry, some caramel, little brown sugar under there. Ooh, that one smells good. Maybe a little vanilla. This one is a lot, I'm getting a lot more kind of a floral and fresh quality. I'm getting some caramel, some vanilla, but it's kind of a very kind of a fresh floral. Mm -hmm. I get grape. Wow. Vanilla. I, I get where you're going with the grape. To me, it's more of like a berry. dark cherry to blackberry. Oh, okay, I could do the cherry. Really thick mouthfeel. Mm. Okay. Cough syrup cherry. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of alcohol in there. That has a really kind of a, to me, like a dark cherry and vanilla. Mm -hmm. 
and it's got a good mouthfeel, good finish. The, the spice on it's very low. The proof on it's very low. That one's easy. That one's just very, that's a dangerous it, one. That one you could probably drink like all day after we get done filming. Maybe I'll just sip on that one the rest of the day. So it is an easy sipper and it had some great, great tasting notes. I feel like it's missing something. Well, it is, it's, it does. Uh, okay. I, I, that's I feel fair. like there's not enough complexity for me there. That's fair. It does seem to be a little bit more one dimensional. The first one had, you know, mm. it had a much more of like, it was rounded with spice and sweetness mm -hmm. and barrel. This one is all kind of just that cherry syrup. Not a whole lot else going on. Not that it's bad, but it's almost too easy. Well, and I definitely think this is one of the lower proof ones. Um, at yeah. least it tastes lower proof I, to me. I was and you and I are getting to the point where we kind of tend to like this stuff more like 100, Higher. 105 yeah. proof. And I think that's sub 100 proof easy. Yeah, because so. I feel like you get more complexness when you actually and, go and, up in proof. And more density of, of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I get berries. Are these any of these buffalo trees? I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> Why are you asking me questions? Like, I'm going to tell you some what's in here. Because I... I, I think I'm smelling some buffalo trays. These are all scotches. So this one is a lot of berries. This is like a fresh berry bush. And I'm picking berries. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I like that one. Raspberries and cream with some barrel. A mm -hmm. little bit of char. To me, this is really nicely balanced across the board on the nose. It's kind of funny because it tastes a lot like this guy. But the flavors are well-rounded. They're... The berryness of it mixes with the sweetness. It's got the vanilla, caramel on the finish. And it I think it hold I think it holds all the flavors better than this one. To me, it's got a little bit more caramel quality mm -hmm. that counterbalances that red berry. The first one was just all berry. Mm -hmm. This one has a little bit more caramel. It's got a little bit more oakiness, a little more proof, I think. I get a little peanut peanut. Just very faint. Yeah, there's a little very bit more faint, of a yeah. I mean, it's almost almond, but yeah. Okay. Um, and it's, to me, it, hmm, that's interesting. To me, it's more well-rounded. I would agree with that. Ooh, brown sugar, caramel, a little bit of honey, some lemon zest. Ooh, I like the nose on that one. I'm getting a ton of brown sugar on this one. Caramel, it's got a little bit of a clove to it, though. I don't know if I love the clove piece of it. I like that one. It has oak. It says, hello, I'm a bourbon. And then it has some like sweetness. The finish lacks a little bit. Are you getting a little bit of almost like a creamy milkiness to it toward the end? I like it. It's very different than some of these other ones though. Yeah. It has sure. a, it has a little bit of kind of a, a little bit of a hay, a little bit of grain, a lot of honey and a lot of just vanilla and cream. It is kind of a little bit one way. I don't get any berryness really. Mm, no. Uh, I got it on the nose a little bit. I get a little bit of like bubble gum, some earthiness. I said bubble gum, but then I also too, I get like that cherry chapstick. Okay. To me, I'm getting a lot of barrel oak and caramel. There's, I get what you're saying with the cherry chapstick. There's kind of this waxiness to it. I'm also what I'm getting and it keeps coming up is this real strong barrel oak quality. Waxy, cherry chapstick kind of flavor. And then I get all that, I get a little bit of spice, I get some oak. I get a lot of oak. On the end, I get kind of a creamy, milky sensation. To me, it goes very almost bitter oak. It's mm -hmm. got a nice caramel, it's got, it's got a little bit of brown sugar. I'm looking for that berry that we picked up a little on the mm -hmm. nose, but I'm not getting it at all. I'm getting a strong bubble gum. It's interesting that you said that chap that chapstick because I keep getting this waxiness. Waxiness, on it. yeah. Yeah, and it's not like a bad thing, but mm -hmm. I've never picked that up before. Number five, just I think this is the lowest proof guy. Just really didn't do anything for me. It just kind of left me wanting more. Number four was cherry syrup it had some other good notes but when it gets to a point where it's not that cherry goodness sweetness chocolatey cherry maybe i'm out <laughs> if it's like cough syrup i don't want to be sick i don't want to take medicine i'm done number three was cereal and a creamy milky vanilla which was still really good if i'm gonna put mm -hmm. vanilla and cereal together 
I like that. Number two, I really, really, really liked. It was a weird cherry chapstick bubblegum just pulled other flavors in and it tied it all together in this big bow for me. Number one just felt like a really established bourbon. I feel like the proof was on point, the sweetness that I love, the other side of it, the oak, all of it was well-rounded. It was a really good balanced bourbon, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But I think there is something to be said for having something be completely double blind, like you're experiencing. You don't know what five bottles are in here. Nope. I know what five are, and I think that does taint my opinion a little bit because mm -hmm. I'm looking for things. Right. And so I stand by my rankings tonight, but I, you know, I have obviously some knowledge of what's in the competition tonight. All right, Jamie, in fifth place, this one was not doing it for me tonight. Wow, and I just drank it again, all. and I like it. Fourth place tonight is your number one. <gasps> I will say this. This was so much better than this one to me, though. Like, it wasn't even close. This one, I think, was clearly last place. And then this one's actually pretty darn solid. Third place is this one. Our second place tonight is this one. And I think, I agree with your assessment, it is kind of cereal grainy, mm -hmm. is some honey, a lot of vanilla cream. If I'm going to have cereal in the morning, I want this one. I think this is the best one tonight. This has some <gasps> of that delicious berryness that this one had. It's got some of the oak char of, of this one and this one. It's got some well-balanced, almost... I don't want to say chocolate notes, but it's just, it's more well-rounded. It's got a little bit higher proof point than this one. I see what you're saying, and I like it. I do like this one. So I guess what I'm saying... It's not terrible. None of these are terrible. Oh, no, no. These are all good bourbons. It's that dark berry, like a blackberry, grapey, blackberry grape, something mm -hmm. in there. Uh, you get barrel quality. You get some Ooh. age notes. It's got a nice proof, which this one just doesn't have. It just mm -hmm. This just falls flat compared to this one, in my opinion. This guy is probably going to be a pretty important guy, and I feel like I dropped the ball. All right. In number five, Weller 12. Yowzers. Yikes. Fourth place, we've got E.H. Taylor. Man, you are hating on Buffalo Trace tonight, Jane. No, I am not. God. I called this. Did Do you remember me asking you if there's Buffalo Trace? Because I did. get berry all over. You did. You but picked up on Buffalo Trace for sure. Tonight it tastes like cough syrup, though. Yeah. Until I know what it is, and now it tastes wonderful. Number three, Fitzgerald. So Old Fitz. Okay, so this guy, I'm not as familiar with. Tell well, because we don't have it very often because it's so incredibly hard to find and expensive. Oh, well. But it's a tasty one. Let's see my second place. 1792. Number one. Wow. Baker seven. Dude, I don't drink you very often. No, that one hides up on the shelf. I don't know if you've even ever had it before. Yeah, I, I feel like I have. Yeah. And I love Baker's, so it, it being fourth place just tells you where the rest of the competition's at tonight. If you like what we're doing here on Beyond the Row, please subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button if you enjoy these five-way double blinds. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. I've known kids to eat the chapstick before. My mom had this cherry chapstick, and I swear my brother used to eat it. And I used to lick it off my lips because it tasted good. I like you, Weller. Weller, you're okay in my book. I've seen a lot of change.